Hey, what's up guys, gals? I'm doing this series to try to explain how the guitar works, the electronics of the guitar. It's something that's not explained well. People have told me over the years that I'm a pretty good teacher. Yeah, I don't know. But I put a lot of time into understanding this stuff myself as a producer, guitar player, all that stuff, you know. I really want to know how it works. So I'm gonna do a series explaining how these things work. I'm gonna to try to keep it short and sweet and informative. Hopefully these explanations are gonna give you a better understanding of how these things work. And it should enhance your experience with guitar playing because with this knowledge, you will be able to start with the idea of what kind of tone you're looking for and then actually modify your equipment or find the right equipment that's going to suit you based on what you know or what you will know. Or maybe you already know this stuff, uh, you know. That, that's awesome. Okay, so I wanna start the series by shamelessly plugging my website, stoneheavysound.com. I make pedals. They're point-to-point -point hand wired by me. You can uh, check out the link below. That's it, that's all, okay? That's not why I'm making these videos. I'm making these videos because I wanna empower you with the knowledge of how guitar electronics work. Let's dive right into it. The best place to start, in my opinion, is to talk about grounding. We're gonna talk a little bit about electricity, what ground is, why it's important. Once you wrap your head around that, at least it worked for me, it will make everything else a lot easier to understand, okay? So let's get started. What is ground? Electricity, just in simple terms, has positive and negative charge. All right, you, you probably already know some of this stuff, all right? Beautiful. So your guitar signal, if you look at your guitar cable, for example, right, you open it up, you've got two cables. You've got your positive, which is generally your signal, and then the ground, which is the negative, okay? Well, ground, the way to think of it, and I'm just gonna plant this seed now because it works for me again, hopefully it works for you, I think of ground as a black hole, okay? Think of it as a black hole that's gonna suck in any positive, any signal, right? Electrical signal goes to ground. They call it shunting, whatever, you know? That signal just disappears, right? In electricity, it's called earth because electricity has a propensity to go into earth. That's basically what ground is. When you plug in all your stuff and it gets plugged into the wall and so forth, that's where it's going. It's going into the earth, that negative or that ground or whatever. So your guitar signal, the sound, the part that you wanna hear is your positive. Okay, so in your guitar, you've got all these metal parts. Metal parts are basically like antennas, okay? Any electromagnetic waves in the atmosphere, wherever you are, okay, they're gonna be going into those metal parts, like little antennas, and getting mixed in with your guitar signal. So this is why grounding your guitar properly is so important. You hear about things like shielding, and ground loops, and ground hum, and all this kind of stuff. Well, this is gonna make a lot of sense when you think of it in terms of a black hole. If your guitar is properly grounded, all that noise from the atmosphere, okay, is going into the metal parts of the guitar. The strings, the tuning pegs, the bridge, the pots. The pickups, of course, have a lot of metal, right? They're just uh, thousands of windings of copper. That's gonna pick up all kinds of radio waves that are coming from everywhere. Your Wi-Fi, your cell phone, uh, radio stations. This stuff just, get, we're being bombarded with it all the time. So when your guitar is grounded properly, most of that stuff, the idea is, it gets sucked into the black hole and ground and you don't hear it. So if you hear a lot of noise in your guitar system, there's a possibility that it's not grounded properly somewhere. So where is it grounded? Well, primarily it's grounded ultimately through your amplifier. In other words, your amplifier plugs into the wall and it's going to earth and it's also providing power for the amp and it's boosting that signal. So noise boost, everything gets boosted, okay? Your strings, 
your tuning peg and your bridge and your pickups are all collecting noise. If they're all grounded, they're going to get sucked into the ground black hole. If it's not properly grounded, then that noise will pass through your signal or the positive, and then you'll hear it through your amplifier. So that's why uh, if you look at your bridge, that's pretty much the hub for the surface parts of your guitar, your strings, your tuning pegs, uh, all, those, all that stuff gets grounded to the bridge, and then the bridge and all the pots and all that stuff gets grounded, connected to the cable, the cable goes into the amp, then goes into ground through the electrical system, okay? So, when you think about things like, uh, you hear about resistance on your pickups, right? Higher resistance pickups have more output, right? Uh, pots, we, you hear that, uh, oh, different pots change the sound of your guitar. Why is that? Well, a pot is a resistor, okay? It's a variable resistor. We'll get into that when we talk about pots in another episode, but I just want you to visualize here, okay? Uh, your pickup has your positive and your negative lead on it, right? Your basic pickup has two wires coming off of it, okay? Now, you'll notice that the shield on the wire, it's usually a braided material, usually steel, sometimes copper on, a, on really good stuff, okay? Well, that's the idea. Like I said, you want the interference to get sucked into the black hole so we don't hear it, okay? Well, that shield goes around the entire cable so that anything that is going around the cable will get into that metal shield before it gets into the signal, which is in the center of the cable, and that shield goes to ground. This is right, that's starting to make a lot of sense, right? So the shield is collecting the noise, spitting it out to ground. Same thing with your strings and your bridge and everything like that. So if you are playing your guitar, if you have one of those situations where you take your hands off the guitar and it starts buzzing and then you put your hands on the strings and then the buzz goes away, that's because you're grounding it. That means the guitar is not properly grounded. Probably the bridge. It's all too often I've seen guitars where the bridge is not properly grounded, okay? Another thing, we talk about shielding. So just like I said, that cable is shielded with a mesh, goes to ground to suck out the noise into the black hole. Well, if you think about certain guitars that have pick guards on them, like Strat style guitars, okay? And people will say that you can shield them with copper, something copper tape, and you could shield the pick guard to block noise out from the electronics. Well, same thing. That's only gonna work if that shield is actually grounded properly. Same idea. That metal or that metallic tape, copper tape, whatever it is, is collecting this ambient noise, okay? And then sending it to ground so you don't hear it, okay? Now, uh, to demonstrate how ground works, if you touch the positive signal to ground, you get silence. Because again, it's like a black hole all your signals getting sucked into ground. Really important to understand and think about it this way. It will completely uh, change the way you think about your pots and your pickups and things like that. Let me give you an example. Uh, some guitars come with 500 kilo-ohm pots, right? They have 500 kilo-ohms of resistance. Never mind what the amount means, it's kind of arbitrary. Right? It's like seconds or minutes. It's 500 kilo ohms of resistance. Some guitars come with pots that have 250 kilo ohms of resistance. What does this mean? What resistance to what? Like, we're, we are the resistance, we're going to win. Well, yeah, pretty much. Okay, you've got your positive signal and your ground. And like I said, you don't want any of your good signal going to ground because it's going to disappear in the black hole. You want to keep it. Well, those pots go between ground and positive, okay? So you're going, wait a minute, that's bad. We don't want any connection between ground and positive. Correct, you don't. But we need it to have control over things like volume, the tone knob. I'm gonna talk about those things specifically in other videos. But the idea is 
you want to have a lot of resistance between positive and negative. In other words, that resistance is going to prevent the signal from going into the black hole. It's resisting it. Now it's starting to make sense, right? So the larger value pot you have, right? Let's say 250 resistance, a little bit of that signal is bleeding into ground. And that does a couple things. You lose volume and another feature of bleeding signal to ground just a little bit, like in the case of your pot, because it's resisting most of it, but some of it is bleeding. Well, it doesn't just cut the volume, but it actually does so in a way where it starts with the highest frequencies first. So even though just a little bit of signal is bleeding to ground, it's gonna actually be your high frequencies. And so it's gonna make your sound duller or less bright, if you will. Okay, then you go up to other guitars have a 500K pot. Those have more resistance, meaning less of your signal will go to ground. Okay, you keep more of your highs. So why do guitars have different value pots in that case? Why don't they all have really high resistance pots? That's a good question. I personally put very high resistance pots in all my guitars. Uh, one mega ohm is Generally, the highest I can find, sometimes I can find two, but I can't hear much of a difference between one mega ohm and two mega ohm. So one is about the point where sonically uh, the, uh, the difference is negligible between, going, uh, between that and any higher value, okay? So I put one mega ohm pots, a lot of resistance, but let's say on guitars that have humbuckers, a lot of times you'll find 500K. Those are gonna take out less highs. That's because humbuckers already have less highs. So those guitars, they're trying to keep more of those highs. On other guitars that have brighter pickups, like single coil pickups, those have higher, more high frequencies, I should say, because they have fewer windings of coil, less inductance. So they actually have more highs in them, but they have lower output because those pickups have less resistance to ground. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. So on those single coil guitars, a lot of times they'll put 250K because they actually are taking advantage of the effect of cutting out some of those highs a little bit. I personally find that that's not necessary because you can do that in other ways. So it's like, why not keep the whole signal and then sculpt it after the fact, not just right out of the gate. In other words, when you start with a 250K pot, you're already rolling off the highs. They're more or less gone. Not exactly. I make a pedal that can bring them back. Uh, if you go to my website, you'll see it's, it's a really interesting design. Nothing like it's ever been done. It's very cool. Uh, anyhow, so that's what pots are basically doing. They're a resistor between the positive signal and the ground. So if you want to have maximum brightness in your guitar, you want to put the largest resistance pots you can get. Like I said, one mega ohm is about the threshold where it's hard to hear a difference from that and higher pots, plus they're harder to find just in terms of, you know, uh, anyone manufacturing them. There are two mega ohm pots and things like that. Um, but you don't hear as much of a difference as you do between one mega ohm and 500 and 250. In other words, the difference between one mega ohm and 250 is very easy to hear. It's not subtle at all. You can really hear a difference. Now, uh, like I said earlier, I was going to cycle back to talk real quick about uh, pickups as well. Okay, so pickups have resistance built into them. So your pickup has two leads on it, uh, right? Your ground, which is usually, again, that braided cable picking up all the noise goes to ground and the positive one, right? They go into your volume pot, let's say. So if you ever thought about uh, the resistance value of a pickup and how higher resistance pickups are generally higher output pickups, well, that's actually a big part of the reason why. They have more resistance, more resistance to ground. So when you look at single coil pickups, they might have a resistance of five or six kilo ohms. And then, uh, Pickups with more windings, like a humbucker or just a, a hot single coil or whatever, might have 10 or 12 or 15 or whatever, more resistance to ground, thus 
higher output. Less of the signals getting sucked into the black hole. Makes a lot of sense, right? Now there are other factors that come into play, like the magnet and the number of windings on the coil. We're gonna talk about pickups in another video. So I hope that was helpful. I feel like that's the best place to start in understanding your guitar's electronics. Please watch the rest of the series because I'm going to go in depth about all the other components of the electronics of a guitar. And I'm really looking forward to sharing that information with you and hoping that it enhances your fun, your enjoyment of playing guitar. And like I said, uh, rather than being a victim to just trying to purchase pieces of equipment and hoping they sound the way you like, uh, I would love for you to be able to start with an idea of what kind of guitar tone you want and then seek out the equipment with this knowledge knowing that it's going to get you the results that you're looking for. Peace.